What's up guys, Nathan here. Today is another build diary, but before I get into that, I want to do a little bit of story time. You see, one of my favorite builds of all time, I played back in Incursion, and it was called the Triple Herald Blade Vortex Elementalist. Pretty much all you would do is shield charge into a pack, and then every pack you hit would explode, and then every pack within, you know, a screen or two of you would also explode. I don't have any footage of this because, you know, I wasn't much of a content creator back in Incursion, but trust me, it was great. I loved it. Pretty overpowered, but definitely one of the funnest, fastest clearing builds I've ever played. In Synthesis, I tried to recreate this build, but instead of using Blade Vortex, I used Orb of Storms as well as the Three Dragons Helmet and Herald of Ice. This was an interaction that I think was created by uh, So Mad back in the day uh, when this originally came out. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's a little bit older than that. But point is, it was very similar to the Triple Herald Blade Vortex build, but it was even stronger because simply put, your explosions, your impulsive explosions, they couldn't shock, but they could freeze when you were using the three dragons, and then things would freeze, they would pop with Herald of Ice, that Herald of Ice would be able to shock all of a sudden, and then you'd get this insane chain reaction that made it so that not only would things explode within several screens of you, but literally any mob that was standing near a mob you killed was just guaranteed to die. There was no questions about it. I think there's even some old clips of So Made himself playing this with Blade Flurry, and he would literally one-shot an entire map. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating here. You, you just group up a bunch of mobs, you blade flurry, you kill one of them, and then they're dead. Point is, build was ridiculously fun. I really liked my Orb of Storms version, but in Legion, they decided to completely murder this interaction. I think the main reason why they did this is because <laughs> it was too stressful on the servers. If you've ever played a build like this with heavy prolif, you know it can be pretty laggy. But what they did is they removed the line from Elementalist that used to read, ailments you inflict proliferate within a 20 unit radius. I don't know if that was the exact wording, but point was every time you froze, shocked, ignited, you were going to prolift that to other enemies around. And this was just a lot of calculations. And as GGG would say, it was very expensive. From a balance perspective, it definitely was a bit on the overpower side, but I think from a performance perspective, it really needed to go. So you know, sad story is what it is. And since then, I really have not been able to play a build that itches that scratch that can really meet that same level of satisfaction that these old elementalist builds used to. That is, until now. I finally decided to try out the Storm's Gift and Pulsa interaction that I've heard a little bit about, I've seen some people play, but I hadn't really tried it myself, and holy crap am I impressed with how this feels. It basically works like this. The Storm's Gift gloves, which are a fairly common pair of gloves that you can get from various synthesis bosses that cost around one chaos for baseline rolls, um, basically proliferate your shocks in a radius of 15 units. Also, if you kill an enemy, that enemy is going to be shocked, and that will, of course, prolif. This isn't super important for this build specifically, but if for some reason you wanted to use this interaction in a build that does not normally shock, it's important to note that this means the build will work just fine if you wanted to play Soul Rand or some weird shit. Impulsa is a chest that's been in the meta for pretty much as long as I've been playing, and what it states is that shocked enemies you kill explode, dealing 5% of their maximum life as lightning damage. Now this damage itself cannot shock, so this is not already some kind of inbuilt crazy proliferation mechanic, but it's still very strong in its own, in its own right, and of course it's going to deal a lot of damage, and it's lightning damage, and you can scale these explosions fairly easily. Now what this does, if you're using a skill that can shock, you pretty much throw out your skill, in my case it's going to be Orb of storms it's going to kill an enemy that shock even though the explosion from impulsa isn't going to shock that shock itself is going to prolif it's going to shock all the enemies in an aoe and then those enemies are probably going to die from the initial explosion they're also going to explode and then that means it's just going to prolif these crazy explosions just like the old elementalists used to honestly playing this i'd say it feels pretty much on par with the old elementalist three dragons probably better than the original blade vortex um, but most importantly it's not nearly as laggy as those used to be it is a little bit laggy but it's not quite as bad as they used to be and it's really fun it fulfills that same i almost want to say fantasy but it's more just like satisfaction that i love about path of exile that you can't really get in any other game um, uh, and I haven't really been able to get from this game outside of explodey chests or hail of ice builds. Um, but this is fantastic. I think this is really the best of its kind right now. I also chose to go Hierophant for scaling these uh, interactions right here because Hierophant really just gives you a lot of area of effect. And that's pretty much all you need, I think, to make this interaction feel good. Because not only does this scale the size of the explosion, having a bigger, ex bigger explosion means uh, the chain is going to work better. It's going to hit more enemies. It's going to sort of shotgun more or less on single enemies enemies more reliably and then it also scales the radius of the proliferation so when an enemy is shocked it's going to shock even more enemies around it 
and it just means AOE scaling on this build means so much more than it would for your generic, I don't know, ice crash, storm call, just scaling at the AOE of your main skill. Um, and at this point, as you can see in the background, really these two interactions plus a little bit of Hierophant area of effect is all that I really needed to get the clear that I wanted. So at this point, I needed to pick a skill, which is funny to think that I could go this far into the build without picking a skill, but really I just decided Ball Lightning and Orb of Storms together was going to totally solve my single target problems. In a lot of cases it does, I don't think the build is fully invested in yet, but that was gonna be sort of my solving for single target. I have this crazy prolif and explosion mechanic that's gonna one shot maps for me, and I just needed to be able to kill bosses get a little bit of help there as well. Orb of Storms is great because it's a very fast cast point. You throw chain on it and then you can trigger those explosions really nicely. And then it also triggers um, casts of itself every time you cast a lightning spell inside of it. So if you sit inside of your Orb of Storms and you spam ball lightning, you're going to just have so many casts being triggered from your Orb of Storms and you're going to get a shit ton of damage. Ball lightning itself is also just one of the best single target skills in the game. The damage on it is just absolutely absurd. All you have to do is slow the projectile just a little bit with slower projectile support, scale up your AOE a little bit, which we, you know, we're already doing with Hierophant, and you're getting absolutely insane amounts of damage. It's very difficult to calculate accurately, but I used this spreadsheet that I found online that was telling me I'm getting around 20 million DPS. I don't know if that's right. It doesn't really feel that good, but it still feels very good. So Ball Lightning, Orb of Storms, very easy choice to make a build like this work. Overall, as you can see in the background, the clear is really what I want it to be, and the single target is adequate as far as I'm concerned. So this build is a raging success for me. I'm having so much fun with this. I played it to 92 over the course of like what is probably like 10, I don't know, probably not 10 gameplay hours, that's overkill, but uh, my last three streaming sessions, which would have been nine, you know, 11 gameplay hours plus a couple hours off stream every once in a while, Overall, it's just a very fun build, huge explosions, and I think it kind of meets that same level of satisfaction that I was looking for from my old Elementalist Three Dragons Prolif build, uh, rest in peace. So if you want to replicate a build like this, good news is it's not ultra expensive in the grand scheme of things, but there are a lot of weird, quirky required uniques that I decided to use with this build, and maybe you have some different ideas, feel free to let me know in the comments below, but here's what I chose to go with. First of all, we have the Impulsa Storms Gift, this is, you know, non-negotiable build literally does not work without these items. You want to try to get some kind of good implicit on the Storm's Gift because it is a synthesis item, which means it can roll all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm not really sure what the best choice would be. I didn't really do a lot of research, but I really wanted cast speed because I was feeling like my build was a little bit sluggish. I'm not really using a weapon with cast speed right now. So I decided to get a 10% cast speed Storm's Gift. Um, I don't know. I'm sure you could do better than this, but that's my main option. And then Impulsa just best rolls possible. Every single roll on it is great. I think I just went for like shock effect on mine since I knew I was going to be doing some moderate, uh, minor to moderate shocks. And it's nice to sort of increase the value of that. Uh, the next items that you need actually unique jewelry that a lot of people probably wouldn't want <laughs> in a build like this. But for me, I thought they would be very strong at series foible, which not only gives you a shit ton of effective HP because we are a 40% mom build, which means we need a little bit more HP, a little bit more mana than you would normally need for a mind over matter build to work work well but it also reduces the attribute requirements for your gems and items which is really key because just about um every or not every other gem in this build is actually you're not going to have enough decks to equip it so if you don't do this you're going to have to hunt and get yourself a nice chunk of decks on your ring and maybe even some uh, strength as well because we are using a staff right now there are better options but we are using a staff right now that has a very hefty strength requirement so it's series foible um useful in more ways than one honestly. And then Essence Worm, because we are running Zealotry in this build, it is the best in slot choice in terms of auras, and um, it's going to reserve a shit ton of mana unless you use an Essence Worm. So Essence Worm with uh, Zealotry in it, um, pretty much non-negotiable on both of them unless you want to make some significant changes to the overall build. For the weapon, I chose to go with... Um, Anger Rod West. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. A Agner, Agner Rod West mainly because it's cheap as shit. That's actually really the only reason. It's a six link that cost me two exalts, has a huge amount of uh, lightning penetration. This build does not have a lot of pen, so that 20% pen goes a long way, especially when you're doing maps that have the additional elemental resistances. That penetration gets a ton of great mileage. Also gives you global gem levels for lightning. Uh, you can get this on rare staves, obviously. It's not the most unique mod, but um, it's great. It helps your Orb of Storms. It helps your Ball Lightning. Um, overall, just a fantastic 
fantastic uh, staff for the price. There are really better things you could do going forward, and I'll talk about that a little bit in the upgrade section of this video, but for me, it is more than fill fulfilling its purposes. Uh, next up, I went with the Militant Faith Jewel with Inner Conviction, which is the Dominus Jewel, and that's pretty much because I'm using Power Charge on Crit uh, Orb of Storms anyway to help me with bossing and clear speed, so I was like, well, why not just you know take some Power Charges on, charges on the tree and translate that to instead of just being a bunch of increased critical strike chance, also a 15% more spell damage. The drawback of Inner Conviction is you can't gain Frenzies, but I don't really have any uh, natural way to gain, gain Frenzies anyway. I guess I just won't get frenzies if I, you know, ever decide to put a headhunter on this build or pick up a resonating shrine. Oh no, no frenzies, whatever will I do? Um, next up we have the flasks, pretty standard for optimal DPS, bottled faith. I know nobody loves spending 14 exalts on a flask, but this is the best in slot uh, flask for crit builds and this one is no different. And then the wise oak, because like I said, we are pretty low on pen unless we wanted to slap on a awakened lightning penetration, which doesn't actually, you know, sim very well in path of building. So I can't really recommend it. Wise oak is going to be one of the, if not, well, the very best option for most, most scenarios. And then next up we have the nearby enemies helmet. This is a class for uh, pretty much any elemental build, especially these days with um, monsters and bosses having way more resistances than they used to. Nearby enemies have minus 9% lightning with the ball lightning enchant. Really not 100% sure about the ball lightning enchant. I guess it gives me a little bit more coverage when I'm trying to, uh, you know, finish cleaning up legions when my aura of storms isn't able to. But uh, really, it's the nearby enemies mob that is the most important. And last but not least, got to fill in your rares with all the resists and life that you can get, which is actually deceptively difficult because as you probably gleaned from the uh, last two minutes of this build, we are ridiculously unique heavy with a unique um, unique chest, a unique ring, unique gloves, unique amulet, unique staff even at this point in the build. So you really need to shell out for some nice uniques. I have these ridiculous pair of boots, which these aren't elusive tailwind boots by any means, but they do have an absurd amount of resists. And I think I paid... Um, uh, probably more, more exalts than I've ever paid for a pair of boots because I don't usually go all in on boots, but I had to get more resists because otherwise I was not going to be resist capped. Uh, you know, got to get yourself a decent belt, got to get yourself a decent ring. I got lucky with this ring. You don't need assassin's mark or anything, but this just happened to be what I got and I'm probably going to use it for the rest of the build. Um, so yeah, overall rest of the rares just need to fill in your resists and get as much life as possible. So you don't have to be super squishy like me in some cases. So for the last part of the video, I wanted to talk about how I'm going to go about min-maxing this build. I'm sure there are some additional ways to min-max, and I'm sure there's some also just cool ideas that I could fit into this build that I'm kind of missing right now. So feel free to leave me a comment if you're displeased with this section of the video, but I do want to just talk about the ideas that I've had so far that will really help kick this build to the next level. Really, first thing is Awakened Gems. This may not seem like a big deal, but there are some Awakened Gems in this build that just add you know, mind-blowing amounts of DPS. The main one, of course, you probably guessed it, is Awakened Added Lightning Damage. This gives an absolutely unethical amount of added lightning damage on top of plus one gem levels if I can get it to level five. I've already got mine almost to level three at this point. Actually, no. Yeah, I think I'm almost to level three at this point on uh, one of my Awakened Added Lightnings. I really need to farm Tora harder. I'm not doing a good job of targeting her, but that's going to have to happen if I really want to uh, push the damage on my ball lightning all the way. Uh, also, Awakened Spell Echo, which is big pricey, but also big DPS, so definitely something to consider. Um, another big one, and this is probably the biggest one, the number one upgrade I really want to make if I want to push this build into a state where I have a really nice boss damage is a Watcher's Eye because we use precision and we can very easily fit in a level one clarity or a level one precision. My main goal is a precision crit multi, and that's, you know, plus whatever, 50% to critical strike multiplier while affected by precision, as well as a enemies on your... Uh uh, consecrated ground will affected by zealotry take increased damage. There's actually a ton of fantastic zealotry mods I could go with. I could go with um, cast speed. I could go with critical strike chance. I could even go your critical strikes penetrate X amount of elemental resistances. Um, there's a lot of really good options, but I think probably take increased damage plus the precision crit multi is going to be my very best. Of course, best in slot would be two zealotry mods plus that crit multi precision mod, but that I literally have been searching for a three mod jewel to like set my eyes on, on um, trade sites for like the last week since I started theory crafting this build and they just don't exist. So I'll probably just settle with the uh, two mod watcher's eye, which is already going to cost like 20 exalts anyway. Um, 
either way, that is like a huge deal for this build. I think that's what pushes this build from good, adequate amounts of damage for uh, tier 16 woke mapping to like unethical amounts of damage, you know, hopefully killing conquerors in, you know, less than 10 to 5 seconds. Uh, the other upgrade, and this is what I'm not 100% sure I'm going to make, but another upgrade that I could get if I really want to push the deeps is a nice Eclipse Staff, probably crafted with metallic and etheric fossils. If I get that plus three lightning gems level, maybe a little bit of lightning penetration, maybe a little bit of added lightning, maybe uh, cast speed, I could potentially craft also with etheric fossils and get some spellcaster mods in there. There's a lot of really good stuff. It is not hard to beat Anger Rod West in terms of pure DPS. But if I give up that staff, I'm also going to be giving up the 18% block chance that it gives. I'm also going to be giving up the giving up the huge amount of energy shield because for some reason the staff gives you a ridiculous amount of intelligence, which in turn translates to something like, I don't know, just a lot of ES. So I'd be giving up a kind of a good amount of survivability to switch staves. But the amount of damage I could get out of a well-crafted Eclipse staff would be huge. Not sure if I want to make this upgrade. I think I'm just going to focus on the Watcher's Eye for now, but uh, that would be a huge part of it, min-maxing it. And um, really, that's about it. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I'm really missing. I don't think this is the most expensive build in the world. Maybe I could do some weird shit with Dying Sun AoE for clear speed, but it doesn't feel like I need anything like that. Uh, so yeah, if you have any ideas for me, feel free to let me know. No, I'm not going to run Sky Forth. I really need the resistances on my boots. Sorry, I've already, I've already thought about that one as much as getting done sucked. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Anyway, that's going to do it for me for the uh, build diary for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed my story time. I absolutely love Impulsa Lightning Pro Lift builds. I hope they don't get murdered too hard in Path of Exile 2 because they're like some of the most fun you, you can have in this game, in my opinion. Uh, thank you guys for watching. My name's Nathan, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you so much to my awesome Patreon supporters, Real Human, Zikrax, Squally, Zoljan, Coda, Julia Allen, Kepler, Sparky, Kata, Putzak, Heiser, 801, Kyle, Logan, Ice Dude, Ginzink, Anonymous, Orangita, and Marius. You guys are excellent. I really appreciate everything you do. Uh, you know, AK, support me on Patreon because that is the main thing that you do. But everything you do in your daily lives, I appreciate too. I see that and I value it. And you keep doing that. You keep doing those things that you do. I'm, I'm sure they're great and valuable to society. And to me, they're definitely valuable to me because they let you support me. I'm rambling. If you want to join these awesome people and hear me ramble about you as well, you can check me out at patreon.com slash Nathan Brother Bob. Uh, if you have a Amazon Prime membership laying around, you can also support me at twitch.tv slash Nathan Brother Bob, where I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 2 p.m. Central Time. Uh, you know, Twitch Prime, that's kind of a cool thing you can do with a Amazon Prime membership where you give, give me a little bit of a sub and it gives me $2.50 a month. And it doesn't cost you anything. Other than the fact that you can't spend it on other other streamers, just one streamer a month, I think. Yeah, that's a thing. But you know, if you're if you're at this point in the video, you're probably considering that anyway because you're listening to my voice for a unnecessarily long period of time. So chances are this like doesn't sound like a terrible idea to you. So yeah, consider go doing that. Twitch Prime, Twitch Prime is a cool cool feature. It's fun. It, it helps me buy groceries. And, uh, yeah, and there's also my Discord in the bottom right-hand corner there. It has nothing to do with money, but that's a really cool thing you can do. You can join that and just support the community and just talk about Path of Exile with people. That's just a fun little tidbit. It doesn't really support me directly, but indirectly it supports me a lot. And it just, you know, makes the Discord a fun place to be. I've really talked too much. I'm going to just chill now. This needs to, this segment needs to end. Okay, we're good. Thank you so much for watching, and I will uh, catch you guys next time.